Jerry, your Helitas product based on the ST3400 is a very niche specific instrument. There are, has been a lot of interest, a tremendous amount of interest in the past two years especially in the helicopter community to adapt glass panel technology into the missions performed by helicopters. How big a deal was it to convert or to adapt what you guys have done in the past to this new set of missions? Well, it's, it's an extremely good question and a, and a deep challenge. We, we thought originally with our vast experience on fixed wing TAWs that we could modify the existing product and turn it into a helicopter TAWs. But we weren't very far into the uh, development of the product when we realized that the highly specialized needs of helicopters required a lot more processor horsepower, a lot more refined database, and extremely customized alerting because of the mission that a helicopter plays nearly always very close to the ground, especially with HEMS or Helicopter Emergency Medical Services. Firefighters and military had a big influence on our product too. Typically a C-194 certified HTAWS is really only obligated by the MOPS to offer protection in a cruise configuration down to approximately 500 feet AGL. Our founder, Jerry Block, saw this as a, a terrible deficiency in protecting the pilot down where they actually fly, and that's all the way down to the ground. Emergency medical helicopters don't know from one minute to the next where they have to land to pick up a patient. You can't predict where a fire is going to be and how close you got to get to the ground to drop water on it and things like that. So we have created what's called true alert algorithms, extremely refined for this application to eliminate nuisance alerts and with four different levels of sensitivity which are automatically adjustable can fly in a cruise configuration down to 150 feet above the ground with no nuisance alerts. It really is a revolutionary advancement in helicopter protection. Let's talk about how that works if you're coming down from cruise because I live near a very active helicopter EMS location and these guys are called out and sometimes find out exactly where they're going to land in flight and they'll they'll fly at uh, fairly low altitudes but over 500 feet and then they'll have to come down into a uh, a power line strewn highway accident scene what do they see on the display when you talk about the automatic levels of sensitivity is it is it kind of a decluttering function that just takes care of itself the lower you go it really is that automatic uh, they're always going to see obstacles and wire. If it, continental United States we have covered with wire data and that's defined as high power transmission lines published. Uh, we've made a very very detailed database of those. As they're descending it's colorized just like terrain in that if the power lines and the towers associated with them are depicted in black they are of no consequence. If they're yellow caution. They're close to your altitude but below you. And if they're red, they're either at or above your altitude. So if you proceed toward them, you will impact. If you get close enough, based on the sensitivity level you have set on our helitos, you will get caution wire and the precise segment of wire between two towers will flash. Not the whole line, but the precise segment of wire that you could impact. If you don't take action and you proceed even closer to it, then you will hear warning wire and it's flashing in red. At that point, you better see it. You better be taking action. You hate to say red is dead, but you gotta pay attention. When our unit alerts, listen, because we don't generate nuisance alerts. There have been a number of factors that have been cited in the accident rate among EMS operators, all the way from crew fatigue to pilot decision making, but obviously obstructions are, are one of those things. How big a part of the overall problem is what this product attacks? Various reports, all the way to the Pentagon level, by the way, because they do their own reports on military incidences, and it's over 40%, based on certain years, involve wires. And the other thing that people don't realize is that impacts with terrain, do you realize that 50% of them happen in day VFR? Now that's something that a lot of people don't know, and, and uh, guys say, well, I don't need the protection because I can see out the windscreen. Well then, how does that explain the statistic that 50% of the impacts are during day VFR? Disorientation, not knowing how close you are actually 
certain situations just put a pilot in a very dangerous situation very quickly when they're close to the ground. And that's what we're trying to avoid here. We're offering protection all the way down to the ground with off airport modes, with tactical modes. Tactical mode only will alert on obstacles. We always want to keep those in view of the pilot. When he's down that low, he probably has good visibility on the terrain. But he may not see wires, because those, when they blend in with the background of the terrain around you, trees, light mist and haze, wires virtually disappear. So this is why being able to see them in color on the display right in front of you is just a beautiful thing. Aero TV is brought to you by the DFC-90 all-digital attitude-based autopilot delivers significant performance and safety improvements over previous generation systems. Its innovative flight envelope protection guards against autopilot-induced stalls, and the straight and level mode provides one-button recovery from unusual attitudes for an added measure of safety. Immensely popular within the Cirrus community, the DFC-90 is now being made available for a growing list of aircraft including Piper Matrix and Mirage, Cessna 182s, and Beach Bonanzas and Barons. Fly with confidence. Fly with DFC-90.